Everybody wants one, a sun-kissed tan, whether it's hours in the sun or minutes in the sunbed. But glamour has a deadly sting. In 2002, 22-year-old Claire Oliver was diagnosed with melanoma. Claire Oliver pioneered the campaign against sunbeds. Her heartfelt plea brought the solarium industry under government scrutiny. Her plea was not in vain. Soon after she tragically died in 2007, the New South Wales government introduced legislation regulating the industry. New South Wales took action restricting under-18s and fair-skinned people from using solariums. But Greens MP Lee Rhiannon fears regulations are not working. Now there is a push to ban sunbeds altogether. They break the rules. It just happens regularly and the government will argue time and time again, we have a tough regulatory regime, that's the way we'll manage it. When we look into it, and often we even find the data on government websites, you find so many examples where industry break the rules and what happens? They may be fined. The fines are meaningless when these companies are making so much money and they're usually not even fined. It really is an excuse. The whole notion of we'll do it by regulation is an excuse to keep a business as usual approach to solariums and that's just not good enough. Again, solariums kill people, they should be banned. The ban was defeated in Parliament last month but they are pushing on. Spearheading the campaign is personal survivor Jay Allen. You know, it's outrageous and you look at the facts um, if you're under 35 and use a solarium just twice, it increases the chances of developing skin cancer, and in particular, deadly melanoma by 75%. With latest research, putting it as high as 98%. You know, people are just going to have to come to realise that, look, you're young, you've got sensitive skin, a tan's not worth dying for. The 35-year-old father of three was diagnosed with melanoma two years ago after concern about a mole on his left ankle took him to a doctor. To me, I thought I was a mess at the wedding. I still tear up now because it's just, it's just a scary time, but um, I didn't think I was going to be around. And to, to go through what I'm about to go through, you know, when I, got, when I had, the mole, had the mole cut out and had free lymph nodes taken out of my groin, the doctor told me that it could be my internal organs and all that. So. Scary stuff. Yeah. But not everyone thinks a ban is the best solution. There's a lot of explanatory material that goes with that to outline to people the risks they're taking when they use these. Uh, no one under 18, no one with fair skins and, and not having frequent re-exposure. So they're the, the key elements of the regulation. Ultimately, you know, if people are stupid enough to want to use them and that's their choice, well, they need to take some responsibility for that. In the long term, I think the public awareness about um, exposures to excessive sunlight and UV will lead to a turnaround and uh, people will use safer methods of tanning if they choose to. Cancer Council Australia is confident the enforcement of regulations will eventually quash the industry. We are in regular contact with the department and we won't hesitate. If we think that the um, enforcement isn't actually strong enough, we will call for stronger action. Some businesses will choose to stop running solariums as part of their business. I think that there will be a decline in the industry as a result of regulation anyway, and so we may end up at the same point of having essentially no viable industry. But Bondi Solarium employee says that even with regulations, business is booming. When they come in, they've got to read all these and fill out this form and sign it that they consent to using the solarium. And then we do a little skin chart of them to decide what skin type they've got and that determines how long they can go on the beds for. And then they've got a sign here which says, says that they've read and previously signed that tanning in solarium is dangerous and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that has to be signed and the form has to be filled out before they can go anywhere near a bed. Yeah. Why, do, why do you think people come in tan? Is it about health? Is it about vanity? I think it's definitely vanity. I don't think there's anything healthy about tan but um, definitely looks healthier. Um, all the celebrities are tan, so I think that encourages people to be brown as well. A lot of celebrities do have bright blonde hair as well, so I guess the whole blonde, bright, um, bright blonde hair and tan skin, I guess people aspire to be like that. So. Fiona Gamble owns a solarium in Sydney CBD. Regulations have not been a problem for her. I embrace the regulations. We're working closely with the government to make sure that we're fully compliant. Um, I also feel that we give a really good product here as well and the clients do come here because they know that we're so 
you know, we abide by the regulations so vigorously. The Australasian Solarium Association refused to be interviewed, but gave reportage a statement. The proposed banning of solariums by the Greens is another knee-jerk reaction. Recent regulations have forced small business owners out of work, adding to the unemployment lists and have created the next wave of problems. Home and untrained training salons. Dermatologist Dr Pablo Fernandez is experienced with regulations in Spain. When we go to the beach, we receive natural sunlight. That is a combination of UVB, ultraviolet light B, and ultraviolet light A. While on some beds, you only receive the A part. In the old times, it was said that UVA was the safe ultraviolet light. That's not the case anymore. We know that finally UVA is going to damage cells and it's going to be an inducer of skin cancer. The, the main thing is when you ban something is that you cannot control what is going on. And that's what is happening with most of the things that we call drugs. If we ban the thing, there's a black marker and we're not going to control what's going on. So it's much better to regulate things, to try to keep things under control. From the dermatology point of view, we will need to ban some beds. But again, that's the risk, the risk of uncontrolled use of lamps. If we control the use, probably we are going to get some problems, a few problems, but not as many problems as if we ban completely the, the use of some beds. For tanners, health issues are the last thing on their mind. It's all about beauty. No, a ban would not stop me from going to the solarium. Um, I can find other ways to use the solarium. As such, friends of mine have it actually in their houses. Um, I just use theirs. Uh, not only that, um, I'm sure a market would exist for illegal solariums. When there's a need, there's always a way. The cold weather is driving many young Australians from the beach to the solariums. Okay, so in winter it's depressing. If you look outside, you'll see it's rainy, it's wet, it's muggy. Uh, I miss that sense of summer. I miss that like feeling, uh, how do I say, uh, like feeling like, like as if like I'm rejuvenated, fresh. And going to the solarium makes me, gives me that essence of summer whereby like, I feel better, I feel, I feel healthier, I look better. Like, obviously that affects the way how I, how I do things. According to the Cancer Council, 2,600 people are diagnosed with skin cancer every year from sunbed-related tanning. And of those, 42 will die. But Jay Allen says to tanners, it's just not worth it. Um, look, come with me when I go for my checkups. Um, every three months, blood tests and chest x-rays. You know, come and feel the anxiety that I feel and, and then scared. Pretty terrifying stuff.